So, since we are mentioning examples, let us next take the example of uh, Lorentz group. And let us first restrict to well, so in this case also we can say that any Lorentz group can eventually be made into we just want boosts. Okay. So, from the full Lorentz group of symmetries. which include rotation focus on what are called velocity boosts along specific directions. So, again we have three parameters we say beta. So, we define beta to be equal to the Newtonian velocity v divided by c. <coughs> And we can think of this as <coughs> beta cap the direction of the boost. and modulus beta just written beta typically to be equal to V by C the magnitude. Now, here also <coughs> the beta cap obviously is a unit vector. So, there are two degrees of freedom in it and the magnitude of beta we know as we tell everybody restricted to remain less than 1 because v has to remain less than c in any relativistic transformations. By the way, nobody said that you cannot begin with an object with velocity greater than speed of light, just that we have never observed one. But here we are saying that you cannot boost anything by an amount greater than c. If you are uh, any particle that has velocity less than c, the only boost you can possibly make are up to c, but never exceeding c. But what is even more interesting is that <coughs> note that 0 less than or equal to beta is less than 1. Beta equal to 1 transformations do not exist. It is never possible to boost a particle of non-zero mass to actually travel at the speed of light. <coughs> So, although beta is a <coughs> continuous and bounded parameter, it is actually not compact. We will that is what we are going to define actually I gave these examples to do this to show the ideas of compactness and non compactness, but just in passing <coughs> uh, 
I want to tell you that there is another way that people often write this. Sometimes one introduces introduce a continuous parameter that takes infinite range of values. It is common to introduce um, <coughs> parameter psi such that beta equal to tan psi. And in this case, we let beta take values from minus 1 to plus 1 and psi from minus infinity to infinity. So, this means that V by C equal to and uh, the gamma factor turns out to be cos psi. So, with this allow let us say minus 1 less than beta less than 1 while minus infinity less than psi less than infinity. So, the psi can then take free range from minus infinity to plus infinity, but of course, psi equal to infinity or minus infinity is not allowed and psi is sometimes called rapidity. and is additive. While beta is not, you remember the velocity addition rule, it is some complicated rule, <coughs> but now you can see wh what that rule is. So, if you wrote out v and u in terms of psi 1 and psi 2, then you will see that it is just saying it is the total is tan of psi 1 minus psi 2, that is tan psi 1 minus tan psi 2 divided by 1 minus tan psi 1 tan psi 2. Okay. So, it is essentially tan hyperbolic addition formula. <coughs> so, that was anyway a comment because I thought that you uh, it can be useful in other uh, areas. But main thing is that <coughs> beta is a parameter that is that looks quote bounded restricted, but the point is that it cannot reach the limit point. And so, there is a big difference between theta where so we might think that theta and beta are similar, but there is a very big difference there is really no harm in say dropping 0. So, we can say this or we can say 0 less than theta less than or equal to 2 pi. This leaving out the one of the end points is only to avoid double counting, but there is no harm saying it reaches 2 pi, but that is that cannot be done for beta, beta can never reach equal to 1. <coughs> so, there is a fundamental difference between the two. So, now <coughs> with this kind 
kind of uh, introduction uh, from some familiar things. Let me begin by uh, saying a few formal things, some general things about the continuum. Okay. So, in uh, just to repeat, what we are now going to do is have groups whose elements are not listed by 1, 2, 3 uh, up to order of the group, but they are continuously parameterized. For every value of a parameter like theta, you have a group element. So, you cannot be writing a multiplication table, because there is a continuum of elements to write on the two sides, but you can define them as functions. You can define the multiplication table as a function of the parameters. <coughs> but so, we will go through some of the preliminaries that are uh, important to know. Uh, one of the ideas, so just as we went through some algebraic preliminaries about homomorphism and so on and so forth, for continuous groups we will see some of the continuum preliminaries. One idea is the idea of a metric space. <coughs> metric space is a set of points, a set in which a distance d is defined between points a and b set s in which such that and there are <coughs> three very simple axioms of the distance formula. One is that d distance between a and b has to be equal to the distance between b and a, it is symmetric. And uh, it is positive definite. if and only if a equal to b. So, this property is called symmetry this is called positive definiteness and the third thing is that it should satisfy the triangle inequality d a c is always less than or equal to d a b plus d b c. right given a b and c these are some arbitrary points you don't want to end up giving some rule such that uh, the usual triangle inequality is violated the distance between a and c has to be always less than some of these it can become equal if b comes and falls exactly somewhere in between a and c then there is an equality but it can never be less okay <coughs> so this is called uh, triangle inequality so metric space is a you can think of any abstract space you like some set of points no other structure presumed except that there is a function d, which is a number. So, d is a number, <coughs> d belongs to r, real numbers. Okay. So, there is a real number r, which measures distances. It need not be a continuum at this point, it is just any set of points. So, you can define a metric space like this. 
Now, <coughs> the next statement is that uh, a continuous space is such that it satisfies, uh, it is a metric space such that all Cauchy sequences converge within the set. So, I actually overstated, I am not trying, I should not try to define the continuum, but we will say a compact set not continuum. What is the continuum is a separate story, okay. You go, you progress from integers to fractions and then to limits of fractions to get irrationals. You have studied this somewhere, uh, dedicant cuts or so, the, hmm? yeah. So, there is some formality that uh, uh, was, there is a distinction between fractions, although you can always find a new fraction between any two fractions by taking differences. So, the you can keep filling up points in the real line, but all the fractions are countable by a process called Cantor diagonal process. So, you can always write the numerator on the rows and denominators on the columns and then you can always list them. So, you can enumerate them. So, let me begin by saying what is uh, enumerable and denumerable. So, enumerable means a set whose points or elements can be put in one to one correspondence. numbers up to some large number s, up to some number n. Natural numbers. Denumerable on the other hand, where it can be put in one to one correspondence with the integers okay. or a set whose elements can be put into so as above okay. but needs all natural numbers. I e not bounded by no finite n. Now, immediately a logical 
distinction arises between enumerable and denumerable sets. Because if it is enumerable, then it has a specific number of elements in it, however large, <coughs> whether it is the number of rupees in Indian economy or declared or not declared, it is still a number that can be counted. And uh, the denumerable one on the other hand is essentially a set that is infinite, it has no upper limit. Okay. The funny thing about denumerables is that their subsets can also be infinite. So, if you take every odd number, it is clearly a subset, but to enumerate, it, to, to list it, you will have to again use all the natural numbers. You can take multiple of, you can pick any prime number you like and you just say multiples of the prime number p. Those, so the size, quote size of the set is sort of undefined for denumerable. You can, <coughs> uh, subsets, proper subsets will have, will can be put into one to one correspondence with the whole set, right. The odd numbers is a proper subset of the, uh, all the numbers, but you can put them in one to, in fact you can count you can tell it is 2 n plus 1, so it is labeled by n. So, there is a correspondence between odd numbers and the, all the numbers, whereas odd numbers is only a proper subset. That can never happen for enumerable sets, its proper subset is necessarily smaller than the set itself, whereas denumerable sets have this funny ambiguity. <coughs> now, it can be shown that uh, rationals are denumerable. Okay. You can have between 0 and 1, you can have any number of fractions you want, they are infinite, but they are actually listable, it is possible to list them, put them into one to one correspondence with natural numbers. The real numbers, so this is called Cantor diagonal procedure. The real numbers are exist as limit points. So, there can be limit points which are themselves rational numbers, some sequences may converge to rational another rational number, but there will exist limits that are not themselves limits of sequences of rational numbers which do not converge to a rational number and the new points you get this way are the irrational numbers okay. or so, rationals example, so these are called irrationals, so irrationals arise in many different contexts the, the, as solutions of some algebraic equations or some problem that you pose or for example, pi uh, the ratio of uh, cir circumference to diameter and so on. So, you do have numbers which are not themselves rationals, but any such can be always obtained as a limit of some sequence. Okay. So, there are limits of sequence, so, sometimes this is sometimes ascribed to Dedekind. Um, <coughs> the point is, uh, and so once you include these, you have filled out the reals completely, there is nothing else left. So, one can prove that there are, uh, so rationals are dense, dense 
dense set in the sense that their limit points fill out the real line. So, sequences of their limits, oh God, limits of their sequences. And yet, the number of irrationals outnumbers the rationals. Okay. So, how you define the number of them is a difficult thing, that is something called measure theory. And measure theory tells you that uh, although the rationals are dense, so dense that you can always reproduce everything else by their sequences, they are a set of measure 0. Okay, if you really try to ascribe some weightage to how much of them is there, it is 0. And it is the irrationals that really make up the whole real line, the real weight of the real line. So, all rationals in 0 to 1, in the interval 0 to 1. Okay. And so, the story of course, repeats in every interval, but that is what it is. So, these are some of the amusements about this and uh, it goes on and on. When Cantor and Dedekind talked about these things, I think one of these two were like ridiculed by others. They, they did not read his papers, they banned his publications, they said he was going mad or that he was saying things that were against religion and against humanity, some such things. So, they created quite a uh, riot at the time they came up with these ideas, but later we rely on them very heavily to make sense of what we are talking about. So, the continuum that we talk about is therefore, a uh, conceptually a big step out of the discrete sets. Okay, so, going back, a set is compact, <coughs> I said something a little imprecise there. So, a set is called compact, provided it is closed in Cauchy sense, and two, every element in it is bounded. or the set is bounded actually. Okay. Bounded in some sense, okay. So, we will give the specific example. Firstly, the Cauchy criterion is that a, a sequence is bounded provided given any epsilon, sorry for this epsilon delta thing, I hate it, but that is how everybody writes it. So, given any epsilon greater than 0, 
there exists a n large enough that a n that d of a n comma a m is less than epsilon for n and m greater than n. So, does this make sense? It's a, so, suppose I have a sequence which is going like this. 1, 2, 3. So, a 1, a 2, a 3, a n, a m somewhere. Okay. The <coughs> difference distance between any subsequent points is progressively getting smaller, necessarily getting smaller that is what it means. So, you tell me any number as small as you like. I can always find a index value n big enough, so that the points have got closer than that bound that you have supplied epsilon. So, such a sequence converges clearly at some point. That limit point may not be part of the sequence, but the limit point should be. So, the closed in Cauchy sense means that the limit point of the sequence should belong to the set. So, yeah, I would not be too wrong if I said the continuum essentially satisfies that. Uh, the second point was that every element is bounded. So, you can have limit points converging, but now think of this. Suppose I take the interval from 0 to 1, I can check that every Cauchy sequence in it converges to some point within the set including the real line. So, right, it is a real interval. But I stack up all of these and try to make a, the whole real line, not just the interval. Of course, it is also closed in Cauchy sense, but it goes on and on. So, there are, there are numbers larger than any number you can think of. We do not want that. So, we want it to remain bounded. Okay. So, the boundedness you can say in the given, so the whole discussion is in a particular metric space. So, you can say that d of any point from any other point is always finite. Is a finite number for any points any two points a 1 a 2 belonging to S. Thus, there exists some m such that d a 1 a 2 is always less than or equal to n for all a 1, a 2 belonging to S. So, that is the idea of boundedness. <coughs> so, I think we have covered the, the very basic notions that I want to uh, use while we discuss further. So, late Later on, if we this is the language we will use, okay, as and when needed, um, because we do need to worry about these points later. So by themselves, these are not part of the quote course, but this language is required for understanding rest of the course. Okay, so.
so we'll stop here today